Welcome back to the Victory Podcast. I'm your host, Steve McGrath, and this week I'm pleased to bring you my conversation with a three-time All-Big Ten honoree, Josh Metellus. Now, Josh started 36 games at safety at the University of Michigan. He came from Pembroke Pines, Florida, where he went to the Charles Flanagan High, which Devin Bush Sr. coached. So he played with Devin Bush Jr. and Devin Gill, the three of which all played at Michigan together. So Josh took the time to tell us about his high school days, his road to Michigan, and what he's looking forward to now because he's about to play in the Senior Bowl, let alone the combine, the draft, and everything that's to come for him. So before we get into that conversation, I need to remind you all that we are brought to you by Team Builder. And Team Builder works with over 500 high school football programs nationwide, as well as college and the NFL. So if you have any questions, any ideas about weightlifting in the weight room, how to best organize it, go to teambuilder.com. Check them out. Use the promo code VICTORY, and you're going to get a free gift. So go there, show them some love. And now, here's my conversation with Josh Metellus. On the line, I am pleased to be joined by Josh Metellus from University of Michigan. Josh, does it feel weird uh, to call you a former Wolverine? Has that sunk in yet? Yeah, uh, it feels weird. It definitely feels weird. I don't think it hit me yet because I talk to you know, some of my old teammates, you know, ones that still go to Michigan. And I, every time I talk about the team, I keep saying we and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm not a part of the team no more, so I got to get used to that. So in this period, right, where, of course, you've played your last game for Michigan, um, how much are you on campus? Like, uh, I know, of course, you're a senior, but like, are you graduating? Do you have classes still? How, like, how are you balancing the whole, this weird period in between? Uh, I'm, I'm graduated right now, um, so I don't have to go back if I don't want to, but I'll definitely be back, especially after the combine. Um, I plan on being there for, you know, a couple months, getting ready for the draft. And uh, it's just, you know, something I got to get used to, not be, being on a, a college schedule anymore. Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, I had to ask because I see, you know, uh, like Donovan Peoples-Jones, he declares, um, uh, your center, uh, Caesar. Um, do you really? talk to, do, do, yeah, uh, do any of those guys talk to you guys? Like guys are about to go pro about that decision or like is that something that they kind of do on their own time with their families and trusted uh, you know, advisors? Um, yeah, they, they talk to a lot of the guys, you know, especially guys like me who are seniors and who like I'm um, leaving. Um, no matter what, because, um, you know, they want to get that insight on, like, agents, you know, because we went through the process they went through last year, you know, deciding if we wanted to stay or leave. Right. So you know, they, want, they, want to, uh, they wanted to get inside our heads, you know, to figure out, you know, what was the process like and, you know, making a decision, stuff about agents, you know, where to train at, you know, what the process is going to be like. And, you know, just, just, you know, some big brother stuff, you know, at the end of the day, we're brothers, and, you know, they just want that, you know, that, that advice and that uh, push through, you know, to decide what they're going to do. Yeah, for sure. And if you don't mind me asking, because you just said you went through it, you know, what were you thinking about this time last year? Like, why did you ultimately decide to come back and uh, play your senior year? Uh, I, I wanted to get, get my degree. I always promised my mom that I'll get my degree. Um, and I felt like it was a chance, you know, to uh, better myself, you know, being able to uh, potentially get a chance to play in the senior bowl. And, um, you know, raise my draft stock as, as well as get my degree. You know, I felt like that was a big thing, you know, my decision in coming back. Oh, yeah. And I think it, you made a great decision, right? Because, of course, uh, you did get your degree, as you just said. And beyond that, as we know, you're playing in the Senior Bowl. So uh, how, did, how do you actually find out that you're going to play in the Senior Bowl? Is that, uh, does, do they tell you? Does, uh, you know, Coach Harbaugh tell you? Yeah, uh, so they send, they send like these, uh, paper invites like these cards um to to the school and um coach harbaugh actually uh you know after practice one day he got he got the the um, paper he got like the package he didn't know who was um invited yet you know it was his first time opening it in front of the whole team you know so we all could just share the moment together and you know he opened it and he uh told the team which guys were invited and you know uh <clears throat> it was a great it was a great feeling knowing that um I was being looked at as one of the uh, top prospects coming out of this senior class. And, you know, it just felt good being able to know that I get to compete against the best of the best. Yeah. And, I mean, three-time, you know, all-conference player. I, I mean, uh, I, I think the resume speaks for itself. And, you know, before, 
I kind of get into any of the specifics, right? It, you know, Josh, can you take us back to when you were 17 years old? I mean, you're coming out of, you know, Pembroke Pines, Florida. Um, you, so you're playing high school, not exactly in Michigan's backyard. Were you always uh, trying to play football? You know, did you, when did you start thinking about college football? Just what was high school like for you? And you know, how does this road to Michigan ever come to happen? Um, so I started off, um, I, I, I've always been good at school and um, I've always played sports growing up too. But um, coming, in, coming into high school, uh, I was in this program that, you know, I got into, you know, it was a long process to get into, but long story short, um, I, I uh, got a scholarship to play, um, to play, I mean, not to play, to attend um, uh, any college in Florida for four years. You know, it was like academic paid scholarship, you know, that I, uh, I, I end up getting um through you know teachers um recommending me and me writing an essay and winning it over you know a bunch of different students and you know so my my thought was always to go to college and um I didn't really start thinking about I always played football you know and I love playing football but I didn't really think about playing football in college till around like sophomore year um because I I just switched from running back to safety and made my first start on varsity you know the first game of the season sophomore year and then, you know, I, I, I had a real knack for it. And my head coach was telling me, like, you know, if you if you do what you're supposed to do, that you can have a good chance to play in the, in the, in the National Football League. You know, you got the intelligence, you got the intangibles. So, you know, I, I just took that upon myself, you know, uh, what's the quickest way, you know, to help my family out and, and do something that I love at the same time. And, you know, I just, at, from that point on, sophomore year, I just took it upon myself to, do everything possible to get a, a scholarship to play football. And yeah. I got my first scholarship after my junior year. Um, and, you know, I've been rolling ever since. Now, you do happen to play at the same high school that Devin Bush Sr. is your coach. Uh, you know, of course, we know Devin Bush goes on uh, just wrapping up uh, his rookie season now. But – how much did Devin being on your team in high school and even Devin Gill, how much did that play with sort of making that choice to go to Michigan easy for you? Yeah, uh, those are uh, two, one, two of my best friends in the world. Uh, grew up together and, you know, we do everything together and uh, we all we all committed together as well at Michigan. You know, we took a visit together. We fell in love with it at the same time. And, you know, we all decided, you know, we, we all, if we had the chance to play college football, you know, together at a good university why not take it and we did and you know it just happened to be Michigan and you know we it, it just made the decision easier on all of us because you know it's far from home but you know at the end of the day um we, we we're brothers and you know wherever we at together you know we can make it at home that, that, that's so wild because I think you might be the first person I've ever talked to that said that it was more of like a group decision where you and your close friends who also were playing and, you know, the school wanted them too. that are like the three of you like, Hey, we can do this here. Let's do it here. So the fact that it was more group instead of personally driven is, uh, is kind of crazy, but I mean, it, it worked out. But yeah, I, it, worked, it worked out. So we, because it is Michigan though, I have to ask, um, no, uh, I have to get my year straight here. Is Jim Harbar head coach uh, when you are getting recruited? Yeah, uh, so my senior year in high school was his uh, was his first year at Michigan. All right, you oh, gotta yeah, tell he, me. He was, he was the coach that recruited me. What's that first interaction like? What's the pitch? Had you heard of him? Because of course there was a lot of uh, news coverage about him taking the job there. But like, what was your expectation going into that first meeting uh, or interaction with Coach Harbaugh? Um, you know, at first. Uh, my first interaction with him, you know, Devin Bush and Devin Gill already had the Michigan offer. And I, I went out to a camp, um, you know, that was held by Michigan. But it was other schools there. It was a lot of Florida schools, like smaller Florida schools, like FIU, FAU, that I wanted to get the offer to. So that's why I really went to the camp. And, you know, I, I did what I had to do at the camp. I ended up being one of the top performers. And then um, not too long after the camp, you know, um, my head coach was telling me that uh, Coach Durkin, DJ Durkin, he was the defensive coordinator, and Coach Harbaugh really loved what I did, and they would like to, you know, talk to me, you know, talk about my future playing college football. 
And uh, soon enough, you know, I, I got on a phone call with DJ Dirk and uh, I got the offer. And um, my first, uh, and then like two weeks later, I took an unofficial visit, me, Devin Gill, Devin Bush to Michigan. And uh, first thing we did, you know, we went and sat down and coached in, in sorry. And okay. coach, we sat down and talked to Coach Harbaugh. You know, it was just crazy to see because, um, you know, always, always seeing Coach Harbaugh on TV, you know, seeing him and his brother. Um, and it was just, you know, crazy to be in the same room as him and, you know, just to have that experience knowing that he wanted me to come play for his football team. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. Uh, but, you know, you get there in your freshman year, 2016, I, you get playing time. Did you – was it ever on? I just feel like, you know, going to a big school like that, there's always a good chance you're going to get redshirted. Um, was that ever on the table for you? Because I mean, you got into eight games. Uh, was yeah, that something uh, you were expecting? Yeah. Uh, my, so going into my freshman year, like going into camp, um, I thought I was going to play. I would definitely thought I was going to play, but I got hurt in camp and, uh, you know, kind of fell behind. So going into the season, I didn't play like the first four games. So, you know, in my head, uh, I was thinking, all right, like, I'm going to redshirt, like, you know, uh, it's fine. Like, everybody does it. And then it just so happened to be uh, we needed uh, more guys on special teams that was able to make plays. You know, I was moving myself up the, the depth chart on defense. So, you know, like, why not? Like, you know, let's give Josh a chance. You know, and I, I shined on special teams up until, you know, up up until the point where, you know, they felt like they can – uh, trust me on defense, you know, if the game was out of hand, you know, we were blowing the team out, you know, they put me in there. I did good. So, you know, after that, um, after that being put on special teams, I really, you know, told my survivor, like, I'm playing now. My red shirt's over with, you know, let me make the best out of this season. Yeah. And, and you know, you go on into sophomore year, you know, you become an all big 10, you know, honorable mention. So not whatever you were doing was working. So, you know, how did you go from, and of course, nothing against, you know, what you were doing in high school, but, you know, you, you're either a three-star or four-star, you know, pretty highly recruited athlete that had options, but how do you elevate your game, right? You go from, you know, you're just a freshman and you work your way onto the field to, you know, avoid getting redshirted, but then sophomore year, by the end of it, you're an all-conference player. You know, what were you doing that were – that put you in a position where you could even do that? I was trusting the process. <laughs> uh, I, I even got this thing um, that I got uh, painted for me by my girlfriend that she that I have in my locker. It's uh, called, I mean, it says trust the process on it. And, you know, I just always trusted the process. I knew I had to work hard. I knew I had to grind. Uh, and I knew that it would eventually pay off. So, you know, I just kept putting my head down and saying nothing. I kept grinding. And it just eventually played off, paid off. Yeah. And, you know, you continue that until your junior year and your senior year where each year you just individually continue to develop and, and do more and be more of an impact player, obviously earn your way onto playing in the senior bowl game. But, you know, while your trajectory was just, you know, going as high as it possibly could, you know, the team, great years. I, I mean, no one can be upset with two lost seasons, but, at the end of the day, you know, Ohio State, Penn State, it, the Big Ten is just such a tough conference. Why do you think that your team was able to be really good, even great, but not take down the, the arts rival? I'm sorry I even brought their names up. It's all good. Um, I, I, I just think, you know, we just – it was more of our, a mindset thing. You know, we got in our own heads. Um, you know, we, we didn't play as – we didn't play to our potential those games. And, you know – uh, I'm sad that it's over and I didn't get, I, I didn't get a chance to uh, win any of those games. But, you know, I just feel like as a team, you know, uh, we just we just didn't do the right things that we knew we, we could do. You know, we didn't show up on Saturday the way we were showing up in practice. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, but, uh, you, you know, you, you give it your all right. What can you do? You can't control everything. Exactly. All right, well. You know, you told me before we started this that you were in Arizona. So let's just talk about today and what's going on the, the next few months for you because we know, obviously, the Senior Bowl is right around the corner. You know, what are you doing right now to get yourself ready for that game? And then I'm sure you, you have the combine on your radar. I don't know when they announce who's going and all that, but you know, what are you doing now to just physically get yourself ready? Um, so, yeah, I'm out here in Arizona training with Exos. Um, you know, they got one of the top combine prep 
programs in America. And, um, you know, I'm working out four or five times a day, you know, eating right. You know, they're providing me with good meals, you know, to get my body right, to, you know, um, burn the fat, but gain muscle as well. And, you know, I'm just really focused, you know, um, on the combine. You know, I feel like the combine and the senior bowl is a really a good chance for me to really show what I'm capable of and, you know, really show NFL teams that I can play at the next level. And, um, you know, I'm just really excited for it. And, you know, I feel like I got the right group of guys around me that's pushing me and, you know, helping me get there. I, I love it. And I, I can't wait. Um, you having had, had a chance now to talk to a couple of you guys are going to be playing in it. Uh, but, you know, I, I want to ask as part of this process, and I'm sure it even predates right now, but, you know, who, if anyone in the NFL, do you watch film on and try to like really model your game after? Like right now, who are the, the, the safeties that you look to to be like, you know what, I want a part of his game, I want a part of this guy's game and incorporate it into mine? Um, so I, I really like, uh, so I, I feel like I'm a safety that can um, cover uh, all types of wide receivers. So, you know, I really like to look at Tyron Matthew and Buda Baker, you know, they, they play in a scheme where, you know, their, their um, defense coordinator asks them to cover it, cover a lot, you know, man on man on receivers, tight ends. So, you know, I really, and, they, and they're really good at it. So, you know, I really like watching them. But then I also feel like, you know, I can play in a box like Derwin James or like um, <clears throat> Jamal Adams. You know, I really watch them too. I love watching Jamal Adams. I love the swag he plays with and the intensity, you know. So I model my games, you know, pretty much after those four safeties. Um, but, you know, I still got the guys like, you know, Ed Reed that I watch, Earl Thomas, you know, guys who've just been the, the difference maker in the last decade at that position. Yeah, for sure. And, hey, if you can put all those guys together and you are that hybrid, I, I think you're going to have a nice long career. <laughs> oh, so. Now, uh, I just I had to ask because, you know, it, it, maybe it's too far out to even think about right now with, with so much ahead of you. But when it comes to the draft, do you have any sort of expectations or hopes for, you know, you want it to be a certain round or a certain team? Do you even think about I, what you want I to do? Want with chance. I just want, just want the chance. chance. Uh, what what want about to... just being with your family or friends? Like, do you have any plans on like what you might want to do during that weekend? Oh, yeah. Uh, I plan on, you know, going back home to Miami and um, watching the draft, you know, waiting for that phone call with my, with my whole family, you know, my immediate family, you know, sitting down on the couch enjoying that moment with them because, you know, um, you know, they've been with me through this whole process and it doesn't seem right, you know, not being with them when I get the, uh, the dream call of a lifetime. That's awesome. All right. Well, Josh, we typically end this show with a little thing that we call the gauntlet. So I hope you're ready for some quick <laughs> questions. I, I, I know you know what the gauntlet is. I hope you're ready for this one. This one might be a little easier. I need to know what is most important to you. In winning, is it having the number one offense or the number one defense? Number one defense, easy. Yeah, I, th I thought that that one would be for you. Now, what's most important? Is it having the right players or the right scheme? Right players. I feel like uh, right players, you could play in any scheme and you'd be able to dominate. Fair enough. Now, did you have one pregame ritual that you stick to? Uh, one pregame, yeah. Um, so I, I started in college, but um, I had a shoulder problem coming out of high school, and it was hard for me to uh, put my jersey on. So I had this one. I had one of my teammates put on my jersey every practice and every game. You know, help me put it on. Uh, Khalid Hudson, uh, shout out to him. Yeah, he helped me put on my jersey every game, every practice. Yeah, so that that was one ritual. You know, I, I made sure I maintained throughout those four years. <laughs> nice. Uh, now, <clears throat> excuse me, what is the single best piece of advice that you would give? I think it's probably the most important question that I ask you today, but just given everything that you've gone through to get here, you've earned the senior bowl spot. Uh, I'm sure there's only amazing things that are about to come to you around the corner. What's the best piece of advice that you'd give to a young athlete that sees where you are and wants to get there? Uh, uh, I got two things. Um, trust the process because it's a grind and, um, it might not always look like um, it's going your way, but if you really trust it, at the end of the day, it's going to get there. And, and uh, no excuses. Um, as everybody know, my uh, Twitter handle, Instagram handle is no excuses, um, underscore 23. And I just pride myself on, you know, having no excuses. Um, because at the end of the day, if you're making excuses, that means you didn't really want to do it or you, you, um, you wasn't really, like, into it in the first place. So, you know, that's, that's one thing I'll get to the young guys, you know, who want to be in my position or want to be better than me. You know, make no excuses and just trust the process.
I love it. Well, Josh, you've already said what your social media handle is. No excuses underscore 23. I hope everyone that listens, follows you and watches the story that's about to unfold. Thank you so much for taking the time today, man. And I sincerely wish you the very best. Thank you for having me.